Okay everyone, um, today what I want to do is to set up my new bivvy which is a MacPack uh, bush cocoon and what I thought I would do is I would just compare it to some of the other bits and pieces that I use at the moment. So it's just come to the end of the July and this is the end of the first of the two coldest months of the year. Um, today the temperature got up to about 15 degrees Celsius. Usually I would expect it to be a lot colder than that, but uh, it is what it is. So I'm not testing any ultra cold stuff um, out at the moment. Now my Acto, um, this is roughly how big it is. You can compare it in my width of my body. And um, so it's about four arm length. Now, and it comes under, I think it comes in at about 1960 grams packed all up. Now in here is the tent, uh, the inner, um, about seven pegs, the poles and also the footprint that goes with it. So I'll just take the whole lot and that scrunches up quite small. It's about that long because you can see the little um, metal -y bits that go at either end of the tent. Now the Hilleberg tent, uh, this is the Acto, there's an Enam which is slightly lighter and I think the Sulo which is a different shape but slightly bigger. Um, but this is my go-to four season tent. Um, I like small tents because um, not so much area inside them means there's not so much uh, coldness or easier to heat up with body heat. Um, but again, the trade-off is room to move and change clothes and all of that stuff. So, you know, motorcycle camping kind of need a bigger tent, but hiking in that, not so much of a problem. So um, <clears throat> so that's the Acto. Now before I get before I get on to the other little bits of uh, uh, the bivy, um, I've got my Lux footprint, which would really go with the bivy. Um, it's mainly because at this time of the year the ground is quite sodden and um, you know you put the bivy on the wet ground, it's going to come up wet and you're going to pack it wet. So this is, I don't really mind getting this dirty and, and wet, so that's what that's for. I thought I'd um, throw this in just as a fair old comparison. Now the other thing that I've got is my Helleberg Tarp 5. Um, and there's about four or five ultralight um, pegs in that bag as well. And then this is a Thermarest. Um, Matt, I think this is the Extherm Extreme or whatever they call it. I'll put the, the name down below. But I just wanted to show in size. Um, most people have got something like this, so I'll know how big this is. So I just wanted to show in size in comparison uh, what it looks like. This is my two season sleeping bag. It's got a square box uh, section and it is quite ultra light. And um, it comes in at about six, seven hundred grams, but it squishes down quite small. And then the other thing that I use is my uh, hiking sticks, and these uh, are used for the the tent poles for the tarp, which I'll show a little bit later on. Right, on to the next bit now. Um, what I'm going to do is just unpack uh, this so you can see what's in it. Basically, stuff sack, and it's got a really good. Uh, cinch thing around that you can pull it tight and you can stuff it quite small but I'll show you why I haven't in a in a, a couple of seconds so pull it out of the sack yeah, or bag we call it and uh, so that's the, the stuff sack and then you've got some poles and pegs and things in here and then this is the actual um, bivy and so if I scrunch it right the way down, I'm just scrunching it up, there's nothing in there, there's no poles, pegs or anything else. And you can get that quite small if you wanted to, so it's not going to take up so much space. Put that in a stuff sack and cinch it tight, you can get it quite small, probably the same size as my sleeping bag. Now, in, uh, in here, which is quite interestingly done, um, this also has a, a door string on the end. What you get is a single pole and it's an aluminium pole and it's got 
funny ends on it. I don't think um, you'll be able to see it, but um, <coughs> they're kind of like a, a, a rounded end. And then the other thing that you get is a little bit of a, probably a repair kit. So it seems to be a cloth in there and a patching kit and a bit of pole and then you get some pegs and this is quite interesting because it's just got a little elastic on it and it opens up and it's just a bag and then there's um, four, five, six, seven, eight I think just make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, of these light and they're aluminium and they're just folded over so I'm not how, sure how good they are but that's quite good. So that was included in the weight of the whole bivvy which if I haven't mentioned at the moment is um, 960 grams uh, all in the bag so I don't know how much the bivvy is itself and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tidy things up and just put the bivvy up and uh, we'll take a look at it. Hopefully you can see it from this angle. The end of the uh, bivvy is not square like you would think. It's actually uh, angled. So even though the pegs here and here are square, then you can see it tapers off down the side. Um, so the lighting is not so good. It's quite e evening time. so. Um, and I'm using the iPad now so what you can see on the pegs on this end is that um, the left hand side peg here and the right hand side peg is actually the center of the bivvy and then you can see it tapers back at an angle um, the other thing that you can see is that the guy ropes are very very light guy ropes and there's a little ventilation uh, flap at the end um, I've got this sitting on my uh, footprint so and then there is my sleeping mat and my sleeping bag and I've got an air pillow somewhere but you can see that there's a fair amount of room um, and then down to the end now what you don't get with it you do not get a small pole at the other end so in order to get the end to be up like that I've stuck a stick under there um, so I will need to fabric a pole I think I've got some spare aluminium pole floating around somewhere so I will just make a little pole um, that goes through the loop where the guy, ro guy rope is and then that should sort that out. It's a bivvy so you don't really need it but it would have been nice if they included something like that. It would have only added what 20-30 grams or so to the uh, to the loadout. So um, the aluminium pole is quite light and they go in at an angle. You can see that one down the end there I haven't. Um, and it's quite long. Now I'll jump in this and we'll see what we get in, in terms of space and uh, we'll see how this goes. Okay so hopefully you can see this. It's fairly easy to get into. You basically sit down here, lift the back up and roll yourself into it. I've probably got, now I'm just on six foot, maybe five foot twelve and five foot and eleven and a half depending on if I stand up straight or not but six foot's good enough um, so and I've probably got a good foot down the end so there's plenty of room to get space there's plenty of room to put stuff here you know what you do chucking it down with rain whatever and uh, so and as you can see I'm, I'm lying sideways but there's a lot of space and a bit of mesh. Now, this is, as I said earlier, this is like the 30 second uh, let's wing it video. It's not one of those planned reviews. I'm just having fun pissing around with the tent, excuse the language. And here comes the moggy. Always have to have a moggy and a gear review. Um, so the material I'll put down in the comment in the bottom of the video. Um, I'll have to go and read the website because I forgot what it is, but it's good 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 stuff and um, you'll see that these these things now there's just one in the middle but what you can do is you can roll 
this up and then there's the elastic loop on the other side but there's another one of these and there's also a mesh which I thought was pretty cool um, and uh, there's another elastic loop so you can roll the mesh down and use the loop and separately do that up so on a warm night you get plenty of breathability um, now I'll have to do some testing and everything to make sure condensation and all of the other bits and pieces but um, this is designed for hiking and um, I wanted something to be quite light uh, I like hiking with the Acto but um, sometimes I'm just doing an overnight or whatever or I'm on the motorcycle and you know um, the Acto takes just as long to put up as this to be honest uh, so but um, I don't necessarily have to carry all the bulkiness it's an extra kg of weight um, on a hot day that's a kg of water um, or a litre of water if you want to put it that way and uh, so things balance out and there's also slightly more pack space so um, hopefully lightweight bag so during the course of the year I'll try and get out in this and I'll do some videos and, and, and things like that and we'll see how it goes and uh, we'll work out what works and what doesn't um, and see how that goes now I'll probably give it a good sleep in tonight and see, see what's happening and, uh, and see how many cats end up in here during the night uh, and um, that's it really for now um, not much else to say now what I will do is I'll go and put the um, tarp 5 up uh, in the configuration that I want to use with this and then I'll come back and uh, show you how that might look so the sun is shining from the left hand side so I can't film in from the front at the moment but we'll see how it goes so this is the tarp 5 up and you can see I've got a good sitting area um, and as you know with the tarp 5 you can bring it down to the ground if you need to so this is the back so you can see basically I just use the tarp 5 to uh, provide some shelter for getting in and out uh, so normally what I do with the uh, tarp 5 is I stick it up and then uh, with the Acto I bung it underneath and you don't get wet while you're putting the Acto up and uh, here's the uh, inside so I'll give that a go tonight and we'll see how it goes and there's a mad cat running around somewhere okay so uh, I had a bit of a move around from last night uh, what I've done is I've moved the the bivy along the side uh, this is what the tarp 5 looks like with the high front and the low back I've still got the sides high up um, mainly because it was quite warm it's about 11 degrees last night and a warm wind blowing so <coughs> no need to drop it down but I can drop it down if I needed to um, one of the reasons why I put the bivy over the side is because it makes a bit of a wind shelter and again um, this is an experiment but I usually would have my chair my little chair and my little table and my stove and everything just there and um, it's good to be able to just reach in, grab something out of my bag that would be in the bivy. Um, you can see the, the hiking stick down at the other end is at its lowest. And if I really wanted to, I could take that hiking stick away and just pull the bivy straight down to uh, the top, straight down to the, to the ground. So the, there's lots of little options. So this is only the, the smallest of the Hilleberg tarps. Um, and this replaced this is the small I have a DD tarp which is the standard I think 9x9 nine nine, uh, foot one uh, and uh, 3 meter by 3 meter and uh, that gives me a, a, a bigger option but you know when you're solo you don't really need it there's a lot of dead space down the other end of the bivy there um, so the bivy was quite nice I had the uh, door done up probably three quarters of the way with a loop it's mainly to let the cat go in and out 
but there was a nice breeze coming in, uh, blowing in. Um, we get uh, a dew forming uh, overnight, so the tail end of the uh, bivy was wet, uh, but I had uh, absolutely zero condensation in there um, from the night, so that was really, really good, and that's probably because I had the door slightly open. Um, I do, in the Ecto, get a little bit of condensation, uh, but that goes away if I open the two end flaps uh, and let the, the air go through. So it's really, for me, condensation is just lack of airflow. Um, and uh, so I didn't have any last night, but again, one night uh, is not really the end of the experiment, so lots of usage. But so what I'm looking at totally here is I've got a, a kilogram in weight of the bivy. I've got probably about 600 grams of the, or maybe 800 grams, I can't remember how much the top five weighs. Um, and then another three, four hundred grams of the little tiny wee Lux uh, footprint there, which I've got folded up. And then uh, I think the poles are about 600 grams or so. I don't know, um, they're aluminium poles. <laughs> so uh, I'm not really fussed with the weight, but effectively I'm carrying probably about the same weight here all up, uh, maybe s including the poles as I would be with the uh, Acto. And if I was taking the Acto, I'd have the poles anyway. So, uh, but there's a lot less bulk. It's probably three quarters of the size packed down uh, as as the Acto. The um, the top five, you can see, it's got a little pouch there, and it just folds up inside of that. And then I have another little peg uh, pole that, pouch that the pegs go into. So, so that's really the uh, the experiment. Uh, and uh, appropriate moggy who was in and out of the uh, bivy all night long under the woolly blanket um, so I was quite warm this is a two season tent and that's all I uh, two season sleeping bag and that's all I was using uh, and I'm on the thermo rest uh, the thermo rest was doing its best to slip around again so I, I've probably got to do something about that I might actually put it in a sleeping bag liner, uh, see how that goes. And then I had my woolen blanket, which I just, uh, because I only had the sleeping bag half over me, uh, I just pulled the woolly blanket over the other, the other half when I needed it. So as I say, it wasn't really cold. Um, but we we'll, shall see.